Today I'm going to have a go at explaining the various reactivities of different halogenoalkanes. We're going to start with primary. We're going to see the difference it makes when we change the halogen. I'm then going to go on to look at the difference in reactivity between primary and secondary halogenoalkanes. And then once we've got our head around that little bit of chemistry, we're going to see what that means for the reactivity of tertiary halogenoalkanes. Let's make a start. As we can see here, iodoalkanes are more reactive than bromo or chloroalkanes. Fluoroalkanes are to all intents and purposes inert. They just don't react. How can we explain this trend? Well, we have two things to consider. Let's start with electronegativity. Chlorine is considerably more electronegative than carbon. We have a distinctly polar bond there. Bromine is slightly more electronegative than carbon. Carbon and iodine, there isn't a great deal of difference between their electronegativities. The delta positive carbon atom tells us that it's attractive to an attacking nucleophile. So we know that these molecules are going to react by nucleophilic substitution. If it's a substitution reaction, then clearly the carbon halogen bond has to break. This bond here is the easiest to break. Why? Because the carbon iodine bond out of the three is the longest. Iodine is a big atom. It's a long way from the carbon. And so it's less strongly attracted to this shared pair of electrons. If it's a longer bond, it's a weaker bond. If it's a weaker bond, it's going to take less energy to break. So hence, iodoalkanes are the most reactive. The difference in electronegativities between the carbon and the halogen, that doesn't tell us anything about the reactivity. It just tells us about how the reaction is likely to proceed. How about the difference in reactivity between primary and secondary halogenoalkanes? Here we've got a primary and here a secondary. Both of these molecules react by nucleophilic substitution. We have seen this mechanism before where the nucleophile attacks the delta positive carbon and simultaneously the halogen leaves. In this case the bromine It's a fairly good leaving group. And we could do exactly the same mechanism for our secondary halogenoalkane. I'll put in my pair of electrons there moving on to the bromine. This particular mechanism, if I were to break it down a little bit further, is known as SN2. S stands for substitution, N for nucleophilic, and the 2 for bimolecular. Because the nucleophile attacking and the bromine leaving happen at the same time, the rate of the reaction depends on both the concentration of the nucleophile and the concentration of the halogenoalkane. So how are we going to explain difference in reactivity between the two types? Well, there are a number of factors we need to consider. As with many things in chemistry, this is not a cut and dry because X happens why must be the result? Let's consider the first part of this mechanism where the nucleophile attacks the delta positive carbon. If we draw this out in 3D, you might be able to see that the presence of more than one alkyl group, particularly if those alkyl groups are bigger than a methyl group, sterically hinder the attack. So we have, in posh language, steric hindrance. What does that mean? Well, physically, they just get in the way of our nucleophile being able to get to that delta positive carbon atom in double quick time. So secondary halogenoalkanes tend to react slower than primary. In the second step in our SN2 mechanism, we have a transition state where we have the incoming nucleophile partially bonded to the carbon atom at the centre and the halogen which makes the leaving group also partially bonded. This is a very short-lived 
transition state. However, the larger and the more alkyl groups that we have present, the higher the energy. The transition state is essentially overcrowded, and if it's higher energy, it's less favorable. So, second reason why secondary halogenoalkanes are going to be less reactive than primary halogenoalkanes. The third factor we need to think about involves the actual alkyl groups themselves. Alkyl groups are known to be electron donating. They have a positive inductive effect. Again, more posh language to get our head around. So we've got a positive inductive effect from the alkyl groups bonded to this carbon. If they are donating electron density towards the carbon to try and mitigate the fact that it's delta positive, that's going to make this central carbon slightly less delta positive, which means it is going to be less attractive for incoming nucleophiles. So we've got three reasons why secondary halogenoalkanes are less reactive than primary. Firstly, steric hindrance. Secondly, the unfavorable high energy overcrowded transition state. And thirdly, because alkyl groups are electron donating. They have a positive inductive effect. They try to stabilize the delta positive carbon atom and as a result, they make it less attractive for incoming nucleophiles. Now, you might think, and quite naturally so, that if secondary halogenoalkanes are less reactive than primary, then tertiary are going to be the least reactive for all the reasons we've just talked about. However, that's not the case, because as a result of this overcrowded transition state and the steric hindrance and the um, positive inductive effect of the alkyl groups, tertiary halogenoalkanes choose to react by a different type of nucleophilic substitution. And that different type of subst uh, yeah, nucleophilic substitution is known as SN1. Substitution nucleophilic unimolecular. In this type of nucleophilic substitution, the rate of reaction depends only on one molecule, and that one molecule is the tertiary halogenoalkane. In the SN1 mechanism, the first step only involves the halogenoalkane, and it involves breaking of the carbon-halogen bond. In this case, X stands for the halogen. It could be chlorine, bromine, or iodine. So step number one, the halogen leaves. And this is a slow or rate determining step. Once again, we have a transition state. In our transition state, we've lost our halogen group. So the carbon atom is positively charged, not delta positive, but actually positively charged. You can see it's only making three bonds instead of four. This makes it incredibly attractive to incoming nucleophiles. So here is our incoming nucleophile. Not only is it attracted by the positive charge as opposed to the partially positive charge, but equally we've only got three groups bonded to the carbon, which means there's lots of space for our nucleophile to attack. We can also see that our nucleophile can attack from either angle because this transition state is planar. So the geometry has changed. Once the nucleophile has attacked, then we have a very fast step from our transition state, our carbocation, to our products. And as you can see, we've got two possible products in terms of geometry, depending on whether the nucleophile originally attacked from the left or from the right. Now, in this case, in the example I've given here, both of these product molecules are identical. However, if these three alkyl groups were different, say a methyl, an ethyl, and a propyl, then my central carbon atom 
would be chiral and the two product molecules would be optical isomers or enantiomers. So understanding that the side of attack affects the geometry of the product is really only important if the carbon atom is chiral. So the question you might be asking of why don't primary halogenoalkanes react by an SN1 mechanism? Well, the main reason is simply that if we have got a primary halogenoalkane, we have only got one alkyl group able to donate electrons towards that positive carbon atom and help stabilize the transition state, which is not enough. So primary halogenoalkane, secondary halogenoalkanes reacting by an SN2 mechanism, tertiary halogenoalkanes reacting by an SN1 mechanism. And this makes tertiary halogenoalkanes fairly reactive. Okay, so um, somewhere in the blurb, there is a link to a PDF with the diagrams I've used in the video, so you can download, annotate, and add to your notes. Secondly, if this has been helpful to you, then please hit the like button and subscribe. It makes a big difference to a channel like us and helps other people find our videos. Look forward to seeing you next time.